What's up? I'm Rain and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to share with you some books you can read while you stay at home. So for this recommendations video, I kind of figured I would just pick some immersive stories that I just felt like kind of sucked me in and let me escape reality a little bit. And yeah, there's some fantasy in here, but there's also some mystery thrillers and some horror and some literary fiction. So I guess we could just start off with the fantasy that I have. Um, it's probably going to be most fantasy that You've already read because I'm pretty new to fantasy but these ones for me I felt like were really immersive also really easy to get into and fly through I would definitely suggest uh not only reading like obviously a favorite picking up probably Harry Potter or you know rereading some of those fantasy favorites that you love that's always a good time if you do want to jump into a series this one I found pretty bingeable and that is Fallen Kingdoms by Morgan Rhodes this is a very fast-paced political fantasy a lot happens in this one like right from the start the world itself isn't too complex it's super easy to jump into it's not the best fantasy series but I think that it's very entertaining and you could definitely fly through the books quite easily. I think I've read the first five. I have like two more left. So I think it's a pretty easy one to jump right into, especially if you are new to fantasy. I found this one really easy to get into and it kept me, it kept me entertained. So I highly suggest jumping into some of Lee Bardugo's works and that's like the Shadow and Bone trilogy. You could then pick up Six of Crows right after that and then jump into King of Scars because yeah this one's this it's a really cool world that Lee Bardugo has kind of built and there's uh these three different like series that are kind of spinoffs of each other and I they're all unique in their own way and they just have so much to offer as far as characters and the overall plot. I think they're a lot of fun and I had a really good time with them. As far as uh, fantasy I feel like I would be doing a disservice by not suggesting these. I really enjoyed these ser the series when I read it. I really really liked this one. I absolutely loved this one. It is one of my favorites of all time. I I just loved it. I love Lou Bardugo's writing. I think that she just does amazing character work and I am here for anything that she does. So I loved this one. This is what we're currently dealing with right now. I think this one might be a duology. I'm not entirely sure. I can't remember right this second, but um, it follows one of her characters from the Shadow and Bone trilogy. So like I said, read them in this order and then uh, you'll be all caught up and you can uh, join in on the fun when the next book gets released and I talk about that. So another series that I would like to suggest that I haven't technically read all of the books, but I've heard fantastic things. I did read the first book and that is Scythe by Neil Schusterman. The world in this is just so intricate and cool. I've heard really great things about the rest of the series by trusted people. So I'm just going to go ahead and suggest this one because I feel like anyone can have a good time with it. I seen anything negative to be said about the series so I'm gonna suggest it uh in this world we basically no one can die they can't die of disease or old age or anything like that so to control the population they have these size and size basically go around and choose who to kill that way they can keep population down I just thought this first book was fantastic and I can't wait to continue on with the series this will definitely be part of my self quarantine TBR. Um, but yeah, I'm having, I'm, I'm having a good time with the series. So I definitely, I would, I would still definitely recommend it. Even though I've read the first one, I've, I've heard too many great things not to mention it. So 
The next one I feel like you would really enjoy if you're more into like paranormal type fantasy books and that is the Diviner series by Libba Bray. This is a paranormal series that is set in 1920s New York. In the first book we are following Evie who's basically like this seer. She can like touch objects and tell people's like secrets and this kind of gets her in trouble so she is sent off to go live with her uncle and her uncle runs this like occult shop and there are these string of murders that happen and the detectives ask for her uncle's help in deciphering these like cryptic symbols that were found around the body and on the body so Evie decides to jump in and help as well. This follows like a multitude of characters and they all kind of have their own abilities. Throughout the series, they are kind of drawn together to basically defeat this entity or whatever it is. I found this series just fantastic. Uh, the last book has recently came out. I haven't read it yet. I actually want to do a reread of this series so that I could jump in to the new book Refresh, but I highly recommend this series. It's really, really great. I do not think the first book is as good as like the next two, but I do think that if you read this and you push through, you're going to love the rest of the series. I also highly recommend the audiobook to this. It is done by January Lavoie, who does these amazing voices. It really, it feels like it's full cast because she is so good at what she does. I just love the 1920s vibes and it's just a cool paranormal like mystery story and yeah, so I think it's a good one to dive into if paranormal is your thing. Besides the series, I have a few standalones that I feel like are just a really good time. One I would highly suggest is The Ocean at the End of the Lane by Neil Gaiman. Basically anything by Neil Gaiman is going to be really awesome. Uh, I have read like three of his books and I just loved every single one of them. His stories always have a fantastical element to them and this one's no different. They probably wouldn't do the description justice. I just loved it. The writing is just beautiful for this one and if you're a fan of Neil Gaiman and you haven't picked this one up, I don't know what you're doing because this is such a fantastic read. I highly recommend this one. If you want to binge something in like one sitting, this is a great one. If you're into literary fiction or if you like fiction with some historical elements to it, I would highly recommend The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. We're following this journalist who is hired by this former movie actress and she's now in her 60s, I believe, but basically she wants this journalist to write her memoir and she talks about all of the different husbands that she had and the different things that she went through coming up in the business and I just loved it. I thought it was so fantastic. I went into it not expecting too much and I ended up really falling in love with the characters. You will feel like Evelyn Hugo is real. I would recommend it for basically anyone. Anyone who is willing to give it a shot. I know it doesn't sound like much, but it's a really, really good book. So it's one of my favorites and I thought I would recommend that one as well. If you're more into mystery thrillers, I definitely recommend like My Lovely Wife by Samantha Downing. This is her debut novel, but I thought it was fantastic for a debut. Um, it basically follows a husband and wife who are kind of bored in the relationship. So they decide to spice things up and to do that, basically they murder women. Well, the wife is kind of like a serial killer and the husband goes out and he like hunts down these women for her. And it's just, it's been compared to like Dexter and stuff, which I don't really like that comparison, but I do think that it's a very fast paced domestic thriller. It's not perfect, but I think it's a good time if you are into uh, these type of domestic thrillers. I think you would get a good time out of it just because it's so fast paced. It's a real page turner. You could fly through it really quickly. If this is your genre, I would say definitely try this one out.
If you want another fast-paced mystery thriller, I would also suggest The Silent Patient by Alex Michaelitis. This one is about this woman who basically shot her husband in the face like five times and ever since then she hasn't spoken a word and no one knows why she did it. They seemingly had a great relationship. Uh, so we are following her story in diary entries or journal entries or whatever and then we are following the psychiatrist who is basically trying to get her to talk. So uh, this one's another fast paced one I feel like has a pretty good twist at the end. It's not, mm, it's not unpredictable if you've read a lot of thrillers, but it's still a good time. I definitely think you could get some enjoyment out of it. So if you're into these, go ahead and pick this one up as well. If you want a mystery thriller that's a little more unique in its format, I would try out Night Film by Marisha Pestle. I absolutely love this one. I read it. It's so cool in its format because it has these like, let me find some. It's got like news articles and like uh, internet searches and such. It's, it's such a good time. I'm really following this journalist who is trying to seek out the mystery behind a very famous cult horror movie director's daughter's recent suicide. And yeah, so it's it's just so cool. It kind of dives into this like underground horror film world. And it's another one where you feel kind of like these characters are real people. You feel like you're solving the mystery right along with this main character and I just thought it was so enjoyable and I couldn't not mention this one. This is probably pretty subjective but I would also recommend this only because it's like one of my favorite books of all time and that's 112263. I obviously need a much better version of this because I don't have a dust jacket on this one. It is kind of a little bit of everything. You're getting like historical fiction, you're getting some like science fiction-ish elements, like time travel elements to it. And then you're, you got a little bit of romance and then some horror. You got a little bit of everything with this one. Um, but the reason I wanted to mention this one was also because of the way that Stephen King writes these characters, you really think that they're real, even though some of them really are. Some of them really actually existed in history. Our main characters feel so real. Their love feels so real. And I just, it, it there's a reason it's one of my favorite books of all time. And I just, I suggest it all the time, even to people who don't think they'd be into it because I thought I wouldn't be into it. And I turned out absolutely loving it. But basically this story is about this teacher who is approached one day by a man that he is kind of an acquaintance with who says, hey, I have this secret por portal into the past and it takes you about six years before JFK is assassinated and I want you to stop JFK from being assassinated. I have all these journals and stuff where I've done research. I've been following Lee Harvey Oswald and I want you to help save the former president. I know it just might not sound like it's up your alley. I just loved it. I, I thought it was so great and it's such a chunker. Just pick it up, try it out. You will, you will think that Jake is a real person. And you will just root for him throughout this entire novel. It's just, it's that good. Like, it's just got so many elements to it. I feel like um, you're sleeping on this. If, you've, if you're if you reading Stephen King and you haven't read this one, you're sleeping on it. Because it's, it's just so good. I love it. And I highly recommend it. Just try it out, people. Just try it out. I promise. It'll make you cry. It made me cry. I cried quite a bit. So... Yes, I love this one for good reason. And with all the time on your hands, you can't, you can't not read it. Another one I would suggest if you're into horror and because you got time, why not pick up House of Leaves by Mark Danielewski? And this one has another interesting format in that it is told in like one word pages. You got some upside down stuff, you know, it's just, it's, 
it's the weirdest book I've probably ever read and it's like the most complex. It's it's insane. So this is kind of polarizing as far as reviews. You either love this book or you hate this book. I feel like most people love it. <laughs> this book is kind of like a work of art. Everyone's going to get something a little different from it. We are basically following this young man, Johnny Truant, who finds this like manuscript in the apartment that he lives in. And the manuscript is basically about this documentary film that never existed. That is following this family living in this house that is believed to be like not haunted but it's like alive like walls move around they open different doors and like they turn into different rooms and such like rooms appear that didn't exist before it's really cool but you're reading like that point of view from this point of view from this point of view so it's just it's kind of mind bending and I don't know if I could do it justice but I personally found a lot of enjoyment in this I really appreciated the art of this writing style it's confusing at times but I think if you spend some time on it which obviously you've got the time if you haven't yet, this is probably the perfect time to pick it up. But like I said, it's it has like footnotes and there are one word pages. There are words written upside down, like different paragraphs written upside down. Uh, it also has, let me find... I know it has, there are, yeah... There are like some where there's like a lot of it just completely crossed out. It, it's just, it's very interesting. Um, but I think that if you have thought about picking up this book and you haven't picked it up yet, perhaps you'll actually pick it up now because yeah, it's, it, it's going to blow your mind, I'm sure. I definitely feel like it's worth giving a shot and uh, it'll keep you occupied. I think that's about it. I can't think of anything else off the top of my head, but yeah, just like, just read some stuff while you're, while you're staying at home. You're staying at home anyway, so you might as well read some stuff. And I, you know, I'm really getting through my TBR. I'm still working because I work at a grocery store, so I'm not going anywhere. It's real creepy out there, guys. If you haven't been out in the world lately, it's it's a pretty scary place. So I highly suggest just cozying up with a book, escaping into a fake world, and yeah, hopefully I'll see you on the other side. I did want to mention that I finally hit 100 subscribers, which was so, so awesome because I really didn't think anyone's going to watch my videos. I really didn't think anyone was going to want to. So I'm so appreciative to everyone who has just given me support and watched at least one of my videos and just said the nice things. And I just love it so much. I have a giveaway that's going to be happening pretty soon. I'll be posting all the details on my Instagram account and I'll probably mention it here as well. It's just easier to do it over there. I hope you got something out of this video and if you have some suggestions for me, go ahead and leave them in the comments down below. Like and subscribe if you want more videos from me and I'll see you next time. Bye!